Professor Dave and Chegg here, there are many laws that apply to ideal gases. These include Boyle's Law, which says that pressure and volume are inversely proportional at constant temperature and quantity of gas. Charles's Law says that volume and temperature are directly proportional at constant pressure and quantity of gas. And then Avogadro's Law, which tells us that as we add gas to a system at constant pressure and temperature, the volume and number of moles of gas present are directly proportional. These laws illustrate the relationship between pairs of variables for a sample of gas. But these can all be combined to give us a relationship between all of these variables, and that's the ideal gas law. This is the most important law describing ideal gases, so let's go through the details now. As we said, the ideal gas law will include all of the variables we have been discussing so far, and is defined by the equation PV equals nRT, where pressure, volume, moles, and temperature are all listed, and R is the ideal gas constant. This gas constant will contain the units necessary to cancel out the respective units on these other variables in order to correlate them all appropriately, and there are several different forms of R that are comprised of the different common units we will often use for these parameters. Gases that show this relationship between these variables are ideal gases, which are gases that fit the assumptions of kinetic molecular theory, and this equation works quite well for gases at relatively low pressure and relatively high temperature. The ideal gas law is useful when all of the parameters for a sample of gas are known except one. Rather than the other laws we've learned, where we tend to make predictions about the change in one variable that accompanies the change in another variable, we can look at an ideal gas in an isolated state and calculate any parameter for that gas. We simply need to know the other three quantities. For example, let's say we have 655 grams of methane gas at 25 degrees Celsius and 745 Tor. What must be the volume of this sample? First, let's make sure we have the right units. Looking at our gas constant, we will typically want to use a value for R that is 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. That means that if we want to get a value for volume in liters, our units for pressure and temperature must be atmospheres and Kelvin to cancel out the ones in the gas constant, and we must convert our mass of methane into moles. Let's perform these conversions now. Using the molar mass of methane, we will find that we have 40.8 moles of methane. Let's add 273 to the temperature to get a temperature in Kelvin. And let's convert our pressure into atmospheres, using the conversion factor of one atmosphere being equivalent to 760 torr. Now let's rearrange the ideal gas law to solve for volume, since that's what we are looking for. Then we can just plug in our values and see that all the units cancel appropriately to get an answer in liters. Now we just put the numbers into the calculator and we get 1020 liters. This is the volume that this sample of gas must occupy at this temperature and pressure. Let's try another basic example. The gas inside a 30 liter scuba tank exerts a pressure of 200 atmospheres at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. How many moles of gas are in the tank? Here we already have everything in the units we want, so let's solve the ideal gas law for moles, since that's what we need, and then plug everything in. Then canceling out the units and doing the arithmetic, we get 244 moles of gas. We can go a step further as well and infer things about the density of a gas. Say that a helium tank is opened inside a sealed room at 27 degrees Celsius, which then leaks out until the pressure of the gas in the room is 9 atmospheres. What is the density of the gas in grams per liter? Well, let's look at the ideal gas law. We have pressure and temperature, but we don't have moles or volume. Well, let's do some clever algebra. We know that the molar mass of a gas, represented by mm, is equal to the number of grams of gas over the number of moles of gas, hence grams per mole. If we rearrange, this means that the number of moles of gas is equal to the mass of the gas divided by its molar mass. So in the ideal gas law, instead of n, we could just as well put mass over molar mass. 
Now we want density, which is mass per unit volume, and we now have both mass and volume in this equation. So let's rearrange it further until we get mass over volume on one side, so that we can solve for it. That will entail multiplying both sides by molar mass, and dividing both sides by volume, temperature, and the gas constant. Now we have this, mass over volume equals pressure times molar mass over the gas constant times temperature. We now have everything we need. Let's plug in 9 atmospheres for pressure, 4 grams per mole for the molar mass of helium, our usual 0 0.08206 with its units for the gas constant, and let's add 273 to 27 to get 300 Kelvin, and put that in for temperature. We see that the units will cancel the way we want to leave us with grams per liter, and doing the arithmetic we get around 1.5 grams per liter. So as we can see, we will sometimes encounter questions that require us to simply plug variables into the ideal gas law, being sure to watch our units of course, and other times we will encounter situations where we have to use a little bit of critical thinking. Always make sure to look at what information you have and what information you are trying to get, and consider ways that you can perform algebraic manipulations or substitutions to make known equations tell you information that you want to know. Professor Dave for Check. See you next time.